Lee, I've been obsessed my whole life, as many people have been, with what it's all about, why am I here, what is this universe all about, and in recent decades we see so much from cosmology and fundamental physics that take us back to the first fraction of a second and sometimes even beyond other universes and, 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 and lots of theories to, to really say how it might happen, but it all comes down to the laws of physics that there are certain laws of physics or meta-laws that generate a sequence of laws. How can we ever get at the question, where do the laws of physics come from? I think there's two very different kind of ideas about this in the history of philosophy and that face us now. One of them is that the ultimate truth about reality is timeless. So they don't come from anywhere the ultimate laws, they just are. For some logical reason, for some reasons of necessary of necessity, they just are. Necessity is a wonderful word because that means philosophically, technically, that in every possible universe that can be imagined, those laws have to be there. Yes. So whatever is necessary in the philosophical sense is that way. Some people would say God is necessary, and some people would say God is not necessary. But the, 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 what that means is that every possible universe that's even conceivable, yes. it has to be that way. Yes. And that's the are, sense you mean? Yes, yes, and there are some aspects of the laws we understand that are like that. For example, the idea that the conservation laws of energy, momentum, and so forth come from symmetry is a necessary relation. There's no conservation without symmetry. The tradition of looking for explanation of the laws in terms of necessary relations is closely connected with the idea that the laws are mathematical because there's the belief that mathematics right. is the study of necessary relationships. Right, right. And the idea that what we're doing is looking for an ultimate mathematical model of the world is part of this, and that's one direction that the search for this question goes. Well, that, that makes coherent sense, because if mathematics is the search for things that are necessary, and the mathematics can indeed model accurately the physical world, and maybe those physical laws that are modeled are indeed necessary. Yeah. Now, having said this, I don't believe this at all. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's and what I want to find the, out. And the other direction goes into the direction that what's most fundamental is what's bound in time. That time is fundamental, time always exists, and time is change. And if you go in this direction, then where do the laws of nature come from? They come from the past. They're the results of processes that happened in the past. And where this goes, and I think that this has not been explored as much as the others, but there are problems in gravity and quantum gravity and cosmology that I believe push us in this direction. It pushes us in the direction in which the explanation for why the laws are the way they are is because they evolve from the past. Whether there's a meta law or not, the laws that we observe were not true before the Big Bang. They were different and they were different again before the Big Bang of the previous universe and so forth. And so what you're looking at is some kind of an evolution of law. Yes. Of the laws of physics. Yes. That perhaps could give rise to the kind of universe that we have today. And this could be generated, if I heard you correctly, either for no reason at all, this is just the way it happens, things are not controlled, they just happen, or there's some meta law that controls that even if it's probabilistic. So it's one of two ways. Yes. And however that is, you know, one of the first people in the modern era to really confront this problem was the American pragmatist philosopher Charles Sanders Peirce. And in 1893, he asked exactly this question, how would you justify the laws? And he said further that above everything that has to be justified rationally, the laws must be justified rationally. Why these laws, not other laws? Right. And he considered various possibilities and concluded that the only possible rational justification could be that the laws are the result of evolution and that the explanation for why these laws and not other laws is that there was a sequence of events in the past that narrowed the possibilities to... Narrowed, not expanded. Narrowed, not expanded. That's the key. Interesting.
Now, why would that occur? Why, why would you have a narrowing of physical laws through different universes, however it happens? Why is that something that should be that way? Why does it, if it's just gener generated randomly, why doesn't it just explode in a random direction? It might, in which case one would not expect to find any coherence, any structure amongst the laws, any okay. complexity in the universe. So you're reasoning created. teleologically, you're reasoning from an end well, result. Well, not and teleologically, but I'm reasoning from the observation that we live in a universe that's very special, that's full of complexity. Okay. And that that so you're requires, taking that as a fact of the matter. Yes, and that that requires explanation, okay. as, as I think was Peirce. And, you know, the, 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 this is speculation. We don't know the answer. But the, the other path has been well explored yeah, right. and, and has not yielded the kind of payoff that Look, we I expected. I think this is terrific. You're absolutely right. And this, that's why this is important. But it's important to push ourselves to say, what are the implications of this? Yes. Before we get too far along, because we want to see, I think we can, we can understand which what the what the implications are, what it would mean to the to the past, or, or like why why do the laws get narrow as as you proceed from the past? Why do they narrow? Is well, so, so Peirce said that the only possible explanation is evolution, by which he meant evolution by natural selection, because he understood the way in which Darwinian natural selection narrows the possibilities, and that's because. Out of all the possible DNA sequences, only very few live to viable species that can reproduce themselves to viable progeny. Reproduce in biology is the key. Reproduction. Yes. yes. You must have that because that, yes. that, 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 that enables next generations to be larger than previous generations. And that, and, suggests, and that's that suggests reproduction of universes, reproduction of space and time. Maybe space itself is the result of a process of evolution that could have led to some very complex, chaotic unspace, some just network of stuff. Right. And the fact that it results in space is a consequence of the evolution. And and why then is space something that would uh, that would be a, a, a sort of a future magnet to pull it towards? In biology, it makes sense. The reproduction has more numbers, mm -hmm. and so that would be a, 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 so a logical consequence. You're pushing me to speculate <laughs> here. But maybe a universe that gets very big okay, is able to propagate itself better, more successfully. Okay, well, that's, I mean, that's, I, I think it's important to push ourselves because if, if we can't even answer the question as, as, as a remote possibility, then it may, it, it, it may it call into question the whole theory to begin with. But I mean, that's, that's an interesting idea. I mean, it's probably wrong, like all of the rest, most of the rest of all of our ideas, but it's an interesting one. But let's come back to the question, why, you know, where do the laws of nature come from? Because if the idea that they represent necessary relations was good enough, then we would be done. But here's the problem with that. The problem with that is that there are lots of different mathematical systems of necessary relations which give us models of physical systems. There are many different ones. There's Newtonian mechanics of 15 particles in 17 dimensions or 37,024 <laughs> particles in two dimensions. These are all consistent systems of necessary relations. So it doesn't seem that that's enough to explain the world we see. So we have to... In my sense, when there's a philosophical idea which has been thoroughly explored and it doesn't work, we should try the opposite. So the opposite of it being necessary is it's all contingent. And that and Darwinian natural selection is the system, the, the, the methodology that shows us how much we can get from almost pure contingency.